Hi, I'm Fox. I'm Yakko. I'm Couch Guy. We're watching the Two Smart Guys show, where every week we bring you the latest and greatest hacks, mods, or retro hacks that we just haven't got to yet. Retro is still, you know... Cool. Or, or not even really a hack, as much as like a really good idea that maybe you haven't really thought about doing before. We like new things. Yeah, so um, today, the Wii. Well, yeah, play with your Wii Wii. Yeah, play with your Wii. So one you know, because things... everyone has forgotten about their Wii because there hasn't been a good hack on it for a while. Yeah, there hasn't been a good hack on it, and it's really kind of dying off. I mean, the, the Xbox 360 and the PS3, their graphics are HD, and they just blow away the Wii. And we're still waiting for the next Wii to come out because we've announced it, we've seen it, we just haven't seen it in stores. Yeah. So while you're waiting on that, we figured we can show you how to play your existing Wii games in HD. Or when you have more time and you want to, you know, have smashed your Wii in frustration, what to do in place of it. <laughs> so we're talking about uh, Dolphin. It's a, <laughs> it's an emulator. But the cool thing is, is you can take like a pretty modern laptop, hook it up to your TV, pair it up with a Wiimote, and you can play HD. Because that sounds like a whole lot more fun. <laughs> it's a poor man's Wii. Let's be honest. Let's let's just say it's a poor man's Wii. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so like you don't even have a Wii, do you? I do not. I do not. Uh, but you can pick up a Wii Mo editing junk store for like ten, fifteen bucks. Yeah, and these are. You don't actually even have to have a, a controller, but it, it is very nice to actually have one to actually play. So what is what is the hardware we need? The... We need to get. Let's see. We need a Wii Mote. An IR emitter. Yeah, and we actually did an episode on how to build your own. It's really simple. You just put like two little, two or four little IR things on a, hooked up to a battery. <laughs> Cost you like five iron. bucks to make. That, that show was actually aired on G4. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, and you know what? In Canada. If, since you're, the nice thing I wanted to tell everyone, since you're running it off of your laptop or a computer, the five volt that comes out of USB could power your IR emitter so you don't need to use batteries. Yeah. So, FYI. And they also make generic ones for like 10 bucks now that you can buy if you're... Lazy. Absolutely. <laughs> and they have wire, they're all wireless, so you just turn them on. They, yeah. Um, you need a fast enough computer with, you know, something that's got a little beefier graphics card, something with HDMI or DVI, just so you can get to HD. It, it kind of depends on the game you're playing. Um, if you're playing like a 2D game, you can get away with uh, a little bit less. And, and there's GameCube. Um, the GameCube games will be a little bit less as well, but... Uh, yeah, a fast CPU is definitely going to help. At least the quad, uh, dual core um, would be. But really, wise. the GPU is what's what hammers it. Um, or it, 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 for an emulator, it, it hits both sides. Basically, the GPU's got to emulate everything, and, and when you get up to like the the Wii and stuff, or the, the CPU, the CPU, sorry, yeah. CPU's um, more. Uh, there, there's a lot of high level emulation in the in the Dolphin emulator, though. So it really, if you're trying to push it between the difference between 720 and 1080, definitely, yeah, the graphics card. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a good graphics card if you want to get it. Yeah, it always helps to have because it, it, the nice thing about a good graphics card because if you buy a nice graphics card, you could if this doesn't trip the trigger, you could always move it into something else, be it uh, a media station, be it something for gaming. Yeah. You know, there it's are other nice options. Good it's not a single-use device. <laughs> yeah. This isn't like the eSATA port or something else that we've talked about for, you know, some big projects where you're really only going to use it for one thing. This can be used for other things. And the, last, the last two things you're going to need is fork out 20 bucks or less, depending on where you go on Amazon. Get yourself a Bluetooth adapter if you don't I've already have it. for as low as like two or three bucks. And on Amazon, absolutely. <laughs> if you're going to Walmart, they're 20 bucks. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know... They're built into a lot of... La almost all laptops now. Yeah, there are a lot of the new laptop. laptops are. So, new desktops, not really. They really haven't gotten into that yet. They're micro-machine size. I think I've got one rolling around my backpack. <laughs> because I used to have to try and talk to my phone that way. And the, both on the Mac and PC version of um, Dolphin, it's, it's pretty much built into the Dolphin the, 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 on how to pair it. Yeah. We were, it used to be you had to download a third-party software, and we were trying that, and it, we spent hours wasted on trying to use the third party. We didn't need to use it anymore. <laughs> and the last but not least, this is an attempt to make HD possible on the Wii Wii that we all have been 
you know, has been a little screen. So let's get an HD TV into this and get a big screen TV. Yeah. Uh, or a higher end projector. Also, I mean, you can, it's not just a high definition, but you can also do, you know, uh, anti aliasing, uh, which looks nice and crisp uh, images and stuff. And they have some nice or filters no, as no well. No jaggies. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because you, you could be working on a progressive screen at that point. Yeah. So that's nice. And uh, of course, you need games. Well, <coughs> you take your game collection that you have because, you know, between you and your kids playing with them, now you have a smashed Wii. <laughs> so we want to take our games and we want to make them usable by this high end computer, or at least the high end graphics card. Right. So, so what, do, what do we need for that? You can't just take the Wii game and put it in your computer. They yeah, don't work. That doesn't really work. Um, you have to dump it or use a dumped an ISO image. And the way you do that is you can use a special raw dump program, but it also requires that you have a special DVD drive. Here's a qualifier in this, <laughs> and I absolutely this is the most important piece of information about this. You must have one of the files that are going to be below inside the show notes or on the screen right now that you, you, if you do not have that model number, this will not work. And don't say the software doesn't work. Don't say it doesn't work. If you don't have it, it won't work. The other thing you can do is if you have a hacked Wii, and if you watch like our previous episodes, we've done like three or four of them on how to hack the Wii, you can yeah. dump an ISO image from the Wii itself to like a USB drive. There you go. You have an instant availability to back up that disk. Which what, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to make an image backup so that we don't have to worry about read speed on the drive, we have it on the hard drive for faster performances. Right. And we, and, we, and we do not pirate games. Do not go to the Pirate Bay and download ISOs. Not worth the no. buying. No. Another BS. You're getting kicked off your parents' connection. <laughs> Dumbasses. I mean, just, you know, these games, honest to goodness, if you were talking, you know, the games are 100 bucks a piece, it'd be different. But. 90% of the Wii games are under 25 bucks. All right, so here's a tutorial, briefly, step-by-step step on how to connect everything, some of the recommended settings. There you go. Get your Wii Wii on. First thing that you need to do is download the Dolphin emulator from our show notes at dolphin-emulator.com. Pick which version you're using for your system, um, Windows 32-bit, 64-bit, or Mac OS X. My system's 64-bit, and if you're running Windows, you're probably going to need the latest DirectX runtime. There's also a link to that in our show notes. Go ahead and install that, and then you're ready to launch Dolphin. Just a few things that you need to configure is you need to point to the path where the ISOs are loaded on your system. So go to the Dolphin configuration and browse to the folder where you have your ISOs that you've downloaded from your legally owned games. <laughs> and then you'll need to go to your Wiimote settings, and you can either configure it to use an emulated Wiimote, which means you can use keyboard or just any kind of generic PC controller, or real Wiimotes. If you've got Bluetooth, simply go to add a new device, hold down 1 and 2 to put your Wiimote into pairing mode, and then click on pair without code. There is no code needed. Then you can go back into Dolphin, Wiimote, and refresh it for the real Wiimotes. You can have up to four, and you're all ready to go. Sometimes you have to fiddle with it. Uh, I've had difficulties with the Wiimote pairing. You just kind of try it over again. If it doesn't work on the refresh, sometimes restart, restart Dolphin. Then in the graphics settings, there's some, a few optimizations. Uh, like I was found the best results on this particular computer, 720p. Um, setting the internal resolution close to that. There's a lot of options. You just got to play with it and kind of see what works best, best with your graphics card and your computer. Obviously, the better you have of each, the higher you can set these settings. <laughs> uh, in terms of hacks, there's some really cool things you want to turn on. Fast min-mapping, disable fog, open MP uh, texture decoder for multiple processors or our multiple core machines. Those things help a lot. They like literally double your frame rate. Pop in some HDMI, plug it into your hotel room TV, 
And there you go. You've got a portable Wii on the big screen with hot, nice high-res graphics that you can just pause and pick up anywhere. So my family and I are on our way to Disney World, and we'll be playing Wii on the plane and in a hotel. It'll be awesome. All right, so that's how you you set up your own little HD. You can Wii. play. You can play with your Wii Wii. Yeah, <laughs> and it's only going to cost you like twenty times the amount of a real Wii. <laughs> that's not twenty times. If you've already got a graphics card, you're you know, and computer, you're pretty much set up. Anyone who's got an HD PC that's using for their home theater system is probably almost prime for this. Almost, except uh, for the graphics card. We tried on mine, and it. The graphics card. Let's say it, almost. It depends <laughs> on how much you spend on their graphics card. If they've got a nice graphics card going. Then it worked better on my MacBook. He, he tried the MacBook. It, it surprisingly did work better on it his It worked Mac, a lot better on the MacBook. But, so I really do invest in a graphics card on this because yeah. it, if it's getting clunky, it's because your graphics card. Yeah, the graphics card I have in there was a low-energy one made for home theater PCs. Yeah, and, and you really don't want that. You want to have something that's going to be able to take the power in the meeting, have a nice GPU, have the nice acceleration that you're talking about. And if, you it's, know, if it's on board, it doesn't have shader model 2, it pretty much won't work <laughs> at all. Uh, but there's some fun features yeah, inside pretty this. Pretty much that no really... shader two. Two point five would work. Um, my old graphics card was two point five. I I was using that uh, for a while. Oh, no, less than two, it won't work. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just invest in it. You know, there's a lot of things you can do with it, and it's worth it. So but it's cool. Like I'm a big Mario Kart fan, and to actually play it in HD is really nice. <laughs> You'll see when you're playing four people. Oh, and the other nice thing is you can pause and save state anytime. <clears throat> yes. Really, and go back to it, which is something you can't do on a real Wii. Yeah. So, although well, I, I, I try not try... to use that feature, I think it it's cheapen, cheapens the game. But but if if you have to, you know, like a lunch or something, you know, cop save it and come back. Curious yeah. question because I haven't been there to test it out with you. Um, your ISO files could you play them across a network to your computer? So if, in case of yes. myself, ninety percent of my stuff. Resides on my free NAS. I don't like to have it on local machines because I don't trust my local machines. I've got RAID arrays for that reason. Yeah, I was playing it off of my Hackintosh on the home theater PC and on the laptop. It was hey, slower. It was faster when I copied it over, but it worked. But it plays across the network just yeah. fine. Yeah, the, we had issues with the wireless in the laptop because it was a little slow. Oh, did you play it over wireless or wired? Wireless. Now, wired oh, on the, the home theater PC didn't have the load issues. But, you know, I had the frame rate issues. Okay, so if you're wired, you're a little faster because you've got the higher connection. Yeah. So, so that's a bit better. It's just like anything else. Well, that's good enough. But I noticed, um, like, having it on the hard drive, the ISO loaded way faster than, like, the real Wii did. <laughs> the games load fast, which is cool. So it's faster, it's um, HD, you can resume. It's fun to try this sounds like This sounds like a fun little hack. Yeah. Um, speaking of free NAS, I got some news for us. Oh. Too smart news. Uh, too smart news. Uh, so we've been a big fan of FreeNAS 8 or FreeNAS, and FreeNAS 8 has come out, and I haven't really, haven't really dabbled too much into it beyond our, our original build of what they did when the update of FreeNAS came out. But it looks like they're getting ready to start putting the things that they took out of FreeNAS back in, in adding modules. So that you can have this bare bones if you're in a corporate environment and you want to have, um, you know, John Q NAS box, he's got it. But if you're like me and I want a DNLA server because I'm sick and tired of these requirements for DNLA, um, I can add the DNLA aspect of it and have a media server straight from the NAS box and I'll have to have a separate computer that talks to it. I like that. Yeah. Uh, they probably they look like they're gonna add torrent. They're gonna add a couple other things back into it. Just go to the FreeNAS website. Look at all the details. There's lots of really cool stuff. So, you know, in the future, it looks like we might play with some more FreeNAS stuff. Yeah. But I always like FreeNAS. Uh, and as always, we're always looking for comments on what you guys want to see us do shows on. And absolutely, I want a new build structure. What we want to get. Seems like buy an antenna. We're gonna do a little show on the um, radio scanner. <laughs> hey, guess what I picked up. What's that? An antenna. I have a scanner and an antenna. Ooh. Um, yeah, I still, well, I still want to make a hydrogen cell. I, I still want to do that. 
Yes. <laughs> Flames, <Looks> fire, <laughs> explosions. You know, you know, okay, so let me tell you how hydrogen uh, has worked out in the past for, in my experience. Long about seven or eight years ago, if you could look up the National Association of Broadcasters Convention, and if they still had advertisements that you could see, they tried really hard to pitch hydrogen batteries. Okay, for people. And the big pitch was no charge time. You pop in this little hydrogen module into the back of what looked like a, you know, a battery, and it would just pop up, and as long as you had hydrogen gas, you were good to go. They did not work very well. They don't exist in the market right now. They don't exist in the, in the professional market at all. You hmm. can't find them. Just because they were supposed to be like this, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, you know. Are you talking like, is that the fuel cells? Is that the same thing as fuel cell? It was this little bulb of compressed hydrogen that you would pop in the back and just look like, it looked like a, a really, really fat CO2 container. Hmm. But it was like, you know, like this, but this big around. I don't think that's the same. I think you're talking about something different. These were hydrogen cell batteries. And that's what they ran off. Well, it, they're not really batteries. This one actually produces the hydrogen gas that that you're supposed to. Well, it's like use a hack to hook up to a car, right? To yeah, get better you fuel basically economy. it's for better fuel economy, and you know they got videos and stuff on it on YouTube. But I, I would like to make one, you know, just to mess around. It's it's. <laughs> I used to do that stuff in chemistry. It, well, that's exactly it's it's a chemistry. Type so thing. it's a little bit of vitamin C in the water and a little bit of nine volt battery that pops out the hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> Anyways, we'll, we'll get more into that in the future. We'll call ah. it the show, and we'll talk more anyway. in the live show that we do every Wednesday night. And I, I want video responses on YouTube talking about what we want to see, because you know what? I've really been disappointed. You guys all have your web cameras. Y'all been sexting each other. Just get the web video. Tell me what you want to see. I hope not. Most of our audience is male. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, maybe with uh, the HD Wee Wee, maybe we'll get some more females, huh? <laughs> or more male males. Oh. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. Later. Bye. This has been the Two Smart Guys Reductions.